here we go. Here we go. So we're going to talk about to the control nodes. So again, the first one they have here is the gate. Well, you can enter enter the gate, and if it's open, basically, if it's open, then you go out the exit. If it's closed, then the exit doesn't pro process. Toggle turns it back and north. You can set how it start closed, start open. Pretty straightforward. And here's an example. They go doing health generator based on the gate. Every tick is going in. So they're using the tick function to, to do stuff here. Uh, Multi-gate node. Basically, it's just like the gate, except there is, you'll do one, and then you'll do two, and then you'll, and if you, you click loop, it'll go back to one. So if, it, if, you, if you don't have it loop, it'll do each of these in succession and then stop. It loop, then it'll go one, two, three. Otherwise, it will do, is if random, then it'll do these in any particular order, and you can add as many pins as you need. And I'm just going to go... Here, they're basically setting different materials to a static mesh component. Uh, do once, pretty much it is you do once, and if it gets called again, it doesn't do anything, and then you can reset it. And then there is the do end node. This is basically like that is do, do this X number of times and then stop. So if it keeps getting called, oh, oh. I know what I need to do. Um, I was having a, an issue with with. I was having an issue with. Um, just realized what these nodes can be used for. Uh, here is they pressing R and they're switching on integer weapon power different values. Flip flop. When we we'll actually use this. So basically, it'll go between A and B, and the output is true if it's A, and if it's B, it will be false. Um, what's the thing about the flip-flop is that you can't use this in functions because essentially every time you call a function, you're creating a new flip-flop node. So this has got event graph is basically where this is used. And we'll, we'll actually use that this week um, in one of the labs. It's going to complicate. It's going to make the nodes actually really messy. And so one of the extra credits will remove the flip-flop for something else. And here is spacebar pressed. And they're basically uh, setting the visibility. They're they're flipping the visibility. So we can actually let's actually do that. Um, so we will put a uh, content draw starter content uh, shapes. Where are my shapes? Here we go. And I'll just drop a torus into the map. I will put this here, and I will give it a material of. I'll use the hacks because that looks cool. All right, so let's go to our. Uh, with that selected, we're just going to go in. We're going to go to the open. We're going to open the level blueprint in this case. And I need the file, save as, save, current level as, lab 06. And that's probably what you probably want to do is basically make a new lab 06 file. All right. Uh, reopen the, the window. No, hold on. Uh, open the level blueprint. Nope. Here's the level blueprint. Where is my viewport? Window. Hold on. Open level blueprint. There we go. Um, so basically, we're going to basically use the keyboard, space, bar. Um, what am I got? What's the note on? The flip flop. There we go. So press. We're going to use the flip flop. Get. Let's go back to level. Select the mesh. Uh, add great reference to the shape torus, which is a static mesh. We're going to type static. Uh, static mesh. 
component. We will get the component of it. And then we will set visibility. And is A drops into here, and then both B and A are going to drop into the this set visibility. And that's something that's going to be uh, we will we will and we'll just, just again propagate chill even though that's not going to matter. Bring this back. And so here's the flip flop. We will set the visibility based on pressing the space bar. I'll compile. We'll jump in. We'll press play. And it is also connected with my jump button. So I should probably pick a different button, but we'll leave that for right now. Um, I'm just going to go to my world settings. And the game mode override is none. Why am I getting... Do the third person, and then we'll do nothing for the HUD time. Oh, because, yeah, OK. Yeah, uh, HUD, uh, just HUD. There we go. So we don't we don't need the timer. So you can see that I've got the torus bouncing back and forth. OK, let's jump back to slides. And you'll, we'll, you're going to jump through and do things. Uh, sequence, basically, you can, there's one, then two. What's ba so basically, uh, they broke this down as, hey, we set these two values. And then we do set this. And then we set that. Use, use, it's, it's used to group actions by similarity. Use it to your, to your, to your effect, as you'd see. I'd probably, probably, like, if I was doing a sequence like that, it would be this section, that section, that section. So these would be these would be going to functions effectively to control, you know, how massive my nodes are and what I'm dealing with. Uh, for each leap, we will use this basically. We'll have an array, and that's something that will in our first element, first piece, we'll set up. We'll have an array, and it will. There's a loop body. So what is the the code of what it's doing? The array element. What is the element we're working on at that time? Index. What what element number it we're dealing with at that time and when com completed it's down here so this is the loop body and then we're, if there's more we need to do here's the completed um here is an example of it goes through all the player scores and it's trying to find the best score um another way to handle this was hey hey um Rather than going through the an array of player scores, uh, you would go through. There's actually an array of, uh, so there's the so each player has their player controller, but in a network game there is a player state, and so this function would actually be going through the player state, in a multiplayer game, um, looking for each player effectively. So we're going to move on from switch on int. So basically, hey, we we put in a selection number, and it outputs something here based on switch and here's difficulty is represented as a integer we could put a difficulty of 55 and it still would work we could put a value of negative 55 um, that's why the default value is, is, is valid here that is again the fact that we can do stuff like that and this is actually um even more more so uh prevalent with the switch let's go back to unreal for one moment um Let's go back to the level graph. And so effectively, um, we're going to make some variables. This is going to be I difficulty. Um, we're going to make an S difficulty. And then there will be an E difficulty and i'm using the the letter in front of it in, in hungarian notation i is going to be integer s is going to be string e is going to represent a enum we'll come to enum in one moment but basically what we're saying here this is going to be an integer and this is going to be a string and what we're saying is with this we can get the difficulty um switch on int is what we're, we're looking at here and we can go in and be able to like hey add pin add pin add pin add pin with the string, we can get the difficulty, and then we can do a switch on string. We can add pin, add pin, add pin. 
I want five. So case zero, we'll click here, uh, pin names. And so this is where it'll be like baby, and this is going to be easy, normal. Uh, and these should be, oh, uh, so this would be hard. In, insane. And these should be all capitals because these are, it's effectively um, constants. So this is a, I could have left them the, the way they was, but I'm, I'm rewriting them to represent that these are constants. And that's how you would write a constant in all capitals. Uh, is case sensitive? No. So that helps. Has default pin? Um, I'm going to leave that on for right now. So I'm going to grab these two, drag these over here. So let's talk about the enum. Enum basically is a, stru it's a structure of variables, um, collection of variables. Like you'll commonly see when they're taught, it's like, hey, days of the week, the names of the months is enum. And that, that's like, okay, not, not that great of use. Um, so let's go to our content draw. Let's go back to, I'm just gonna make a new folder called lab 06. Where is lab 06 being? Where did that get saved? We'll have to find that later, but let's go into lab 06. Um, uh, this is gonna be under blueprint and it's gonna be a uh, enumeration. And this is going to be our E E difficulty settings. And come on. There we go. And this is add enumerator. Basically, it should be add, add a value. Um, so this is, we want five, and this is going to be, again, baby, uh, easy, normal, hard, nightmare. I do, I did that. I mean, they don't know. These are just the, the display names. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I did insane. I'm doing nightmare here, just just to be different. You know, like, hey, like, take, hey. No, no, these. Uh, no, 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 no. So the thing is, is this is separate from the strings. Yeah, that that's that's like like we're we are doing the same thing three different ways. But I just happen to name those 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 five things. The, they're here, you can see that I'm not using the, the uh, they're not constants. So uh, don't don't hurt me. Take it easy on me. Let's play. And, and again, the description, these are bad use of descriptions. Uh, bring it on. Ideal, ideally, these would be um, things that you would output, you know, based on this, just like, like put this out, string out. Um, yeah, but again, I'm just, I'm having fun with the, the enumeration right now. Um, what we would see that here, this would then be the e difficulty settings. And this is when we get E difficulty, and this would be the switch on the D E difficulty settings. So here is, and this is again, hey, this is probably the most structured way of do doing this. Like, again, the only problem with this is that if you have to add to the enum, then you're gonna go back and update this node and update that, that scenario. And that is um, a problem that can be a massive problem 
in bigger systems. So like a, an, an AI system, um, like a lo local AI, like some some things that can be expanded upon different different uh, you know state based system. Enumeration does the job, but doesn't do the job always well. And it's not again, it's not expandable. That's the you know. If I don't ever expand my difficulty settings, then I don't have to worry about this. So, um, you know, let's take let's take Helldiver for example. They added a difficulty level to their game, so there is that in play. Let's go back to the slides. So we just switch on a new mode. All right, string and text. So we got to talk a little bit about text before we go ahead. There are three types of strings in Unreal. The first one, the standard string, and this is this is this is just basically a standard string. There is what they call a text, which is a type, and that is a it's a string that has been formatted. And then there is a name, which is a special type of text that is for like display names. Um, player names, uh, play, their, your player name is also would, would refer to as a name in Unreal. So there are three string types that, and, and the two that, the, why they exist is for legacy reasons. Uh, the original Unreal had had tech, had string had uh, text and names in their in the engine, and they just they've been there from day one. So just roll with it. So format text node. So this is, hey, plug in these values and use this format. So again, player one ends up being Romero. Score is 17. Uh, Luke is name two. Player score 14 is there. And it's basically result using the, the braces to, to refer to the variable names plugged in. So. A pen node, you've seen this already. This is one of, the, one of the ones I really like. It is useful. It is powerful it's robust add add pins basically add hey i want to add i'm making a line of text add a pin add something here um text then a variable name then more text and then another variable name is what you'll probably see you'll see so here is saying hello player again after the o in hello there is a space you may not we not evident but there is one and that's so that you know when when it, you append it's not hello no space then the player name drew it right away uh string to it node this is basically hey we can take um oh it's taking a string um and converting it to an integer uh math you've seen it is the math expression node so here's the expression x plus y so there's an x there's a y Here is uh, the parameters is base weapon damage, ability modifier, enhancement, current status. So it's adding all these together and then multiplying by the whatever current status is. Not sure why they're adding base weapon modifier and ability modifier together first and then multiplying, but and then yeah, I'm not sure why, but here we go. Uh, lerp node. So we 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 almost used the lerp node with the sliding door. So basically. Alert node basically, either you've got two points, and they could be uh, here, like they're using floats, but we could easily use vectors for the LERP as well. Um, with the LERP, basically, you've got point A, you've got point B, and then there's the, you, there's an alpha, which is basically a percentage between zero and one. Um, it returns um, it returns basically a value between A and B. So if it's zero, it's going to be A. If it's one, it's going to be B. And if it's anything between, it's going to calculate something in between. And this is basically um, used all over the place. Um, one of the things that we did is we, we could take a... So like for our purposes, we knew where the doors were going to start. And we kind of knew how far they were going to slide. So in the loop calculation, it is B minus A. Well, we knew the door, like in the doorways, we knew that that was going to slide like 100 and 175, 190 units, approximately. So we didn't need to do the alert because that, that A minus B was already being in place. Um, again, the value of alert is basically is A minus B times the alpha added back to A. Let me say that one more time. B minus, if I didn't get it right, it's B minus A times 
the alpha value, which is between 0 and 1, added back to B. So it's a ch change of the delta between B to A, which, again, why we didn't use lure art, because we knew that value. And we're multiplying it by what the output of, this, of the door was. And we brought, added it back to the start, and that was our return value. So that's the lure. You've, it's, again, short for linear interpolation. Now, it's linear between A and B with the value, but we, we can input the alpha value on a curve. And that's where that timeline comes. We can add more points to do, to do stuff. Um, you could go back to the door, and we can have it do wacky stuff like with the curve. We can be like, it kind of like moves open, open, close, and then opens finally opens up you, know, you can do do stuff with that with the timeline with the timeline and lerp or the how we did it at the door you can have that door do do things um here is lerp uh x race position this is not a good example of the lerp um uh, random numbers we've already seen random booleans but there is random integer or a random integer within range uh a random float and there's also a random float um, within range. So this is between the max and min value. This again is 0 to 1. And this is returns um, integer between 0 and the max integer minus 1. So um, there is create a sequence of repeatable random numbers using a random string variable. And so you set the initial seed, and it runs off of that. And then there's, again, integer for stream, integer for in range, uh, random float in range. There's also the random Boolean um, is also in that mix as well, um, from the stream as well. So those are those pieces. Blueprint communication. So the first thing that they say is that direct blueprint communication. And I'm going to go back, and what they're saying is, is that, hey, um, let's bring in, uh, we have a variable, say, some item. And this is going to be um, BP collectible. So let's go back to the collectible. So here is reference to some item. Um, we can go right, and one of the things we did right away was the score, get score awarded. And this is what we mean by direct referencing. We're going directly from an instance, we can get something that is directly available to us. Now, the big thing I want to be clear about is that there is uh, ways to turn things private. And when you do that, that means that only the class that it that contains that variable can change just see do whatever it wants with that variable all other classes um and the children classes of that won't be able to touch that touch the variable as well um so all right um let's go back to the slides So here is basically key is pressed. Um, we're, from here's the display variable, static mesh component. That's again getting direct access to it, and from there setting the material. Casting in blueprints. Basically, you've seen cast. Basically, yeah. The idea here is that um, what is the object, the reference, the core, the core base uh, of it, and if we can cast it to this particular class. I'm gonna go move on because we've talked about this already. Blueprint right now, actor begin or us, a cast to machine. Again, they want to make sure that the, the class name machine overlaps whatever this, this, this is going on here. And if so, it does uh, recharge the battery on the machine. Again, there, again, what's going on here is that we, machine is some sort of actor. It could be a pawn, which is also inheriting from actor. But we got to cast from this other actor to the, the class we want to get access to this particular this is a function that is on that's been defined within the class machine or one of its parents uh, level level blueprint communication again we create a reference again getting direct here's the act on actor begin here is you know point light we did this in lab one this is her hello hello light though with tagability 
uh, event dispatcher. So basically, the idea is a level between blueprint classes and the level blueprint. Um, it's created in the blueprint class and then imp implemented in the level blueprint. So we can create um, things. And I'm actually going to jump in. We're going to go to uh, the content drawer. We're going to actually do your one of the. This is the second part of your blueprint uh, assignment this week. Uh, this is going to be an actor. It's going to be BP trigger. Close this. Let me, um, so with trigger, basically, I'm just going to go. I'm going to add a, bo uh, a box. What? Perspective. Oh, I've added a. Added a box collider. Uh, we'll just go and then we'll add a cube. There we go. Okay, so uh, right away I know I want this to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, uh, 0.2. No, this actually should be 1, uh, 1.2 raised to 0.1 up. Uh, not 0.1, it should be. 10. I'm going to make the cube the default root. No. no, I'm going to leave it the, 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 the default root. Um, and then I'm going to go to my box. I know that this is uh, 50, 50, 50, and I want to move this up 70. So it sits on top of the box. Okay. So here we go. So we've got our, our collision. Uh, I'm going to just compile. I'm going to go to my event graph. I'm going to take these out. Because the only that I'm concerned about is the event right now, uh, begin overlap. And I'm going to go from the other actor. I'm going to cast, cast to, um, let me just do pawn. In theory, I'm only, I only care about pawns, uh, not necessarily something off that pawn. But here, if, if it's anything else, I don't care. I just want to care, care about pawns. Um, and so here, um, let's do the event dispatcher. And this is going to be detonate. And we're just basically going to call the function. And yeah, I could have taken out this cast and done this, and I did that during the lab. But here I'm just going to call detonate. So I'm going to compile. So here we have basically the event dispatcher detonate. All right, I'm going to save everything. I'm going to go to my lab. My, I'm going to bring in the trigger. I'm going to put that right here. And with the the and so the next thing I want to do is I'm basically going to make a uh, blueprint class call and it's going to be an actor uh, BP spot and I'm going to go into that class and I'm basically going to add a cube uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 10 so again, it's at the root, and then I'm going to basically make uh, the use this red material, this basic asset zero one. It's a you know, basic material. Um, I'll compile it, and then I'm going to go to the lab and here, and I'm going to place a spot right here. And you can see that the so there's a couple things I can do. Um, in this case, the cube is really, I don't need the seam derout root. So I'm just going to basically um, make that the root itself. Um, and I'll save it, compile, and there we go. Um, the other thing that I can do with it is there is, it's called hide. It's hidden in game. So again, I'm going to compile, I'll come back, and you see like, hey, here is that cube right here. When I go press play, it's going to be hidden in game. 
Now, I think there is collision. Yeah, I'm, I'm hitting the collision with it right here. So there is collision. So let's go back to the spot one more time. And I'll just basically, uh, can character step on? No. Pre's and presets, no collision. So it's just basically a marker in our game. Save, save everything, and we'll go back to lab six. You can see now I'm not colliding with it. Cool. All right, what are we going to do? So first of all, uh, let's go to the lab, and let's go... I don't need tick. I don't need begin play. All right, I'm going to create a reference to the BP spot because we're going to use this that as a location marker. I'm going to select this and go back to my my lab dot, and I'm going to call detonate. So again, the BP trigger uh, class has the detonate, so I've got to click on an instance of that class to get this node correctly. And again, right here, this will be um, play sound at location. Get actor location. I'm going to grab another one of these spots. Um, and then I'm going to spawn spawn emitter location. And for our purposes, I'm going to, again, I'm going to get get the actor transform and I'm going to split this note split this pin so I get location rotation specifically um, what I don't want is to play around with scale I want to keep it at one 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 again my asset here is going to be the explosion the asset here is going to be the explosion cue all right and if I compile I go back I can press play you can then see And there we go. So we've got basically that, and that basically is your second part of your lab, is to create a, a basically a blueprint class that has that indicate that knows that has a event dispatcher that is then implemented in level. Okay, I'm going to grab these two. I'm going to pull these back. I'm going to pull this out of the way as well. What I now can do is I can now, I'm going to go back to my content draw and I'm going to go to the starter content. Go to props, uh, not props, um, shapes. I just want to play with the shapes. So I'm going to put down the quad. I'll put down a sphere. Put down a tube. This, whatever this is, um, and I'll put down the wedge, and I need to go to its details and flip it around so it faces us correctly. So where, where is, that's the 350, 350, just so I, I've got these all lined up, 350, that really should be at zero. 350 minus 200 minus, we'll do 500. That'll make this 250. So they'll make this 250 and that at 500. Just so, again, I just want these lined up. Don't, don't have to, but, uh, you know, OCD. All right, we're going to go in. I'm going to go to the content drawer. I'm going to go into back to our lab six folder. And I'm going to make a new blueprint here. And it's going to be uh, an actor. It's going to be BP material changer. Okay, 
Let's open this up. Alright, I don't need spot, I don't need trigger, I don't need the level wrap anymore. Um, I will sub everything. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add basically a cube. And I'm basically going to make this 0 0.5, 0 0.5, uh, 50, so it stands on the bottom, so it stands right there. And this is basically, again, just a marker. So I have a marker. I'll give it a... Um, use the air material so it's this nice blue glow. I'll compile, and I can now drop that into the world. And this is just basically a marker in the level. You know, it's basically being a marker for the object itself. Um, what I am going to do is... Um, I'm going to turn on hidden in game. And again, this is also going to go back to its collision and turn uh, no collision at all. It doesn't So there's it's not and the character cannot step on it. So basically it's just a marker in, in the level for this object to, to form. And I'm just going to do uh, rename that to model because that's what it is. All right, the work that basically is we're going to have basically there is uh, three variables that we're going to create right now. Uh, first one is going to be the uh, static mesh list. And it's of type static uh, static. Come on. It's going to be the static mesh actor. And we're going to go compile, clear this out, select this again, and we'll open this up. And we'll make this into the array type. So we'll compile that. Um, we will also turn as, and, uh, instance editable, so we'll edit it in the level. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is to uh, material A, and this is of type. Material, and we'll add another one, and that will be uh, Material B. And again, with these, I got to go back um, and turn these back to a single variable reference and not an array reference. So right now, using A and B, this is you know it works. It's going to work for our purposes, but ultimately, um, extra credit basically is hey, instead of using two materials. Let's let's make a an array of materials. So now that we've got this, we can actually um, can compile. Now let's go to our event graph. Um, we will not use event tick or begin overlap, but basically event event begin play is basically they want to set timer based on uh, by event. We're gonna go create. Add an event, add custom event. The event is change material. So we're going to plug in the, here to here, one box to the other box. And the time we're going to put in 1.5. Actually, I'm going to go and actually do a uh, do a variable called change time. And this is going to be a float. We'll recompile. We'll put 1.5 in here. Uh, we'll make it instance editable as well. Compile so that everything takes. And then we can plug that into there. And it will be obviously be, be looping. Oh. Oh. I just thought of something else. There's a there's a there's a way we could there's a way to fix uh, the issue that we're having with teleporter. I just thought of something. But anyways, we'll move on. Um, just for the sake of argument, we're going to put this as a material changer as a category, and basically we're going to put all of these under that group because that makes sense have that as a group and you should be grouping things on a regular basis okay the change material um, 
get a reference to the model and get static uh, get static mesh what did I set this to be this is static mesh actor Oh, it's already the static mesh component already right here. Um, that makes that makes our lives easier. Um, no, 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 no. We're not using this. Um, that's this model. We we want to go into the static mesh list. Okay. Uh, first thing that we want to do essentially is the the flip flop. And basically, a, whether it's A or B, the f first thing that we really want to do is get the static mesh list uh, for each. So basically, we're basically saying A or B is which which material are we setting up to? A and B both are going to exec through here, and this will be again. We'll, there's a letter reroute node down here to help us out. Um, on the array element, we basically want to get the static mesh component. And then from here, we want to set the material. Now, in between here, and then there will actually be two of these. And we'll grab material A, grab material B, huzzah. So, so far, so good. Um, we just do it. In, we need an if statement. And this is where this is coming in here. This is where it's going to get a little bit messy. So A is going to go up here. If I can connect them. False is going to go down there. And this is going to come in from the loop body. And that is essentially, again, the, the, the basically the, the, what we're going to set, we're setting up. I'm going to compile. We'll go back to here. All right. I'm going to lock. So the first thing that. Here's the material changer, so change time. Uh, what I didn't do on the material changer is I did not make these editable instances. So we'll compile, we'll go back. So now I can go back and be like, hey, this will be gold, and this will be um, ground moss. Totally two different. Uh, ray elements. So basically, what I what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to try something first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this is the one I don't want. And I'm going to try and I'll add those five actors. And if we did it not take. Uh, it's still locked, but it's not adding them. I actually have to go in. Let's try this now. No, it's not. In Unity, um, I'm trying to do something that you can do in Unity, and it's not working here in Unreal. Uh, so I have to assign these by hand. And if everything is okay, we press play. Uh, we'll save everything. Press play. And there you go. Gold and mossy. Back to gold. Again, I'll go back and I'll do a change time of 0.5. You see that it's operating much faster. So. That is your first part of the lab. It's basically setting up the material changer. Um, I am going to basically rebuild the material changer. Do this quickly. It's going to be actor uh, BP material cha changer plus 
just so that you have uh, a reference of, of how to do this better, actually. So i um, not going to worry about, I'm basically going to put in uh, the cube. Cube. 50 and I'll make this green uh, variable so the first one again is going to be the static mesh and we want static mesh actors because that's what's being placed in the scene and that is going to be my uh, mesh list and that's going to be an array I'm going to make a new variable. It's going to be the material list. And it's going to be of type material. And that's also going to be of that as well. Um, the next is going to be of type material. This is going to be uh, next material. And that's going to be of type material, but only a single reference. And then the last one is material list index. And this is going to be a integer. I'll compile, and that will always start at zero. So basically, what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm rather than having to um, flip flop and do a crazy stuff, I'm going to write a basically going to write um, a function. And let's get uh, get oh, sorry set next material and that's basically we're going to grab our index get it increment and then we need an if if this if this value is uh, greater than or equal to, so here's the material list. We'll get that and we'll get its, its length. Again, I tried putting in count and it knew to put in length. If that's the case, if that's greater than or equal to the, the length, then um, we're going to get basically the index here not get it's a set true we'll just set that to zero and that's basically what this this so now we're controlling going through the material list uh, compile we can go back to the event graph we do not need again overlap I don't need events uh, we'll make the the event uh, custom event change materials and this will again um, we'll add another variable here uh, this is a change time this will be a float and we'll sign that to be 1.5 um, the mesh list needs to be vi visible the that needs, but next material shouldn't be in the index. Shouldn't be. We shouldn't. We shouldn't be touching that. Change time. We do. Again, we will get a reference to to it, and then again we'll set timer by uh, event. Change time goes here, and change material goes here. So the first thing that we are going to do is basically again we're going to set the next material. And then from here, we will then grab the material list. And this is the for each loop. And then on the array element is uh, get uh, static. object. Oh, I'm using the wrong list. I want the mesh list. There we go. So get static mesh component. 
and this is set material. And again, we'll, this is the loop body, and then next material. See how this was much cleaner. I'm debating whether I should rewrite the the assignment. The assignment is written so that you have to use the flip flop, but this is again. Uh, I'll just collapse this. So again, here is set next material, mesh list for each loop going through here. So I will compile this. We will actually just delete this, this one. And I'll bring in the material changer plus. Again, mesh list five. We'll just assign these. Caps. So there's my mesh, li mesh list in play. Make this bigger so you can see it. And then we'll go to the material list. X pulse. Uh, moss. Go gold. The statue glass. And here is Water Lake. And I'll actually go to point seven five. This put you back up here. What's going on? Okay. And we'll press play. And what did I do wrong? Save everything. I didn't. I didn't connect something, did I? Oh, it's not looping. That's not helpful. What did I do wrong? Let's see. How did I then change time? Oh, I'm <laughs> silly me. Uh, next material is none. Uh, so get next. So we want to set next material. Uh, so here's the material list. Uh, get basically get a copy, um, and this is basically this is being plugged into the there. Hold on. Uh, break this. Break, break, break. Hold on. Break this link. Uh, the material list index. There we go. So where do I want to do this? 
Um, so ultimately, I will plug that into here that way. But I also need to, I'm going to do a reroute node just to get around there. But also, if it's false, I'm, get, I'm setting my material as well. So I forgot to actually set the, the next material. There we go. Press play. And you can see that is activating. So that's that's extra credit. Um, any questions from class? Anything from Discord? No? Okay. I'm going to stop the recording right now. And you guys are done with your lecture for tonight.